here's your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, John Campbell, Jr. Dreams are a remarkable thing, a remarkable power of the human mind. Freud, the psychoanalytical school, has held their important. But there's one aspect of dreaming that they deny, they overlook, perhaps. That's tonight's story. If someone handed you a photograph of a man's face and said, uh, do you know who this is? Suppose that was a photograph of yourself 20 years from now. You'd have an awful hard time recognizing that. We can recognize a picture of something that we have seen. It is impossible to recognize something that we haven't yet seen. Let's say we have a patient who comes into a analyst's office, a badly frightened man. Dr. Sharp, my name is Jim Bedford. I, I got your name from the National Health Trust. They say you're the quick shock analyst they'd recommend in this area. It's nice of the Health Trust to say that. It builds up my morale in these troubled post war yes, times. They speak very highly of you. I feel so darn silly running to a psychiatrist. That's for old ladies. Maybe we better forget it. I've got a lot of pressing work that I should really should be taking let's, care of. Let's see, Mr. Bedford. Now, according to the data you gave my secretary, you're with the State War Reclaim Bureau. Yes, that's, that's right. I'm regional director. I've been with the Bureau all my adult life since 1971, since the Doom War. Well, it must be rewarding work watching the radioactive ash cleared away, houses and stores springing up again after so many decades, seeing the city itself come back from the rubble knowing you could take a good share of the credit. That's going, to, that's going to be a long task, another generation. Well, sit down and you tell me about it. No couch? I thought all you psychoanalysts had couches. This office building was lucky to escape being hit. Yes, it's one of the few pre-war buildings left in this part of Sacramento. Matter of fact, it was your war reclaim bureau that loaned my family the money to rebuild. Doctor, why is it happening to me? What am I going to do? I, I have to stay at my job. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else knows this area the way I do. Nobody knows the people here the way I do. You were born here, were you? Yes, I've lived in Sacramento all my life. What is it that's bothering you? I... I have some kind of hallucination. It keeps getting worse. I've tried to shake it, but it comes back bigger and stronger. Now it's getting so that I can't work. I can't do my job. I'm starting up recall-inducing equipment, Mr. Bedford. It'll put you in a state of semi-sleep for a few moments. I'd like you to tell me what this hallucination is. Then maybe I can tell you why you have it. And maybe help you do. Get through all these damaged inventories. Must be a million of them stuck in the basket today alone. Oh, I ought to quit and go to bed and get some sleep. Where's the report on that mutant rat they've been killing? One that spins webs. Better okay the extermination program. Poisoned grain probably be best if it eats grain. Probably have to ask for federal aid and not enough funds to do the job right. Oh, I'll okay the extermination and hope they can raise the funds. Bad enough to have ordinary rodent infestation. Plague carriers, the worst possible sanitation menace. Menace? Huh? Oh, it's you, Giller. How did you get into my apartment? Front door was unlocked. I'm sorry to interrupt your work. Well, I was about to stop. What time is it? Past midnight. Do you want a beer? I'm going to have one. Siphoning valuable grain off to make beer in these times of need. Must be nice to be a big wheel and have luxuries. Your own stove, refrigerator? You know, I haven't had beer since last May. You'll survive. You've always managed to. Trade some of that black market coffee of yours or some of those eggs from your chickens. You know, we lost all our chickens. That blood disease from the old H-bomb blast. Take a look at this. Your application for aid? Turned down. I know. Why? Don't ask me why. I... Oh, okay, okay. I'm the responsible person. I turned it down. You and I have been friends since we were kids. So what? You get a kick out of it, Lord, and over the people you've known. People who were something in the community before the Doom War. People you had to look up to and say sir to. 
I'm sorry about your poultry farm. I'm sorry for all the poultry raisers, you included, and the beef raisers and the walnut growers, but certain things have to be rebuilt before others. Heavy industry comes first. Factories, steel and cement and fuel producers, synthetic fabric. We're your people. Good night, Giller. Write me a letter on the proper form. I'll talk to you in a few days about my application for aid. Maybe you'll change your mind. Come around. Giller ever got that farm going, he'd be the biggest black market operator in California. Five bucks a piece for great A eggs, and he knows where to get it. Everybody trying to swing a deal, make money, cash in on people's hunger. I wonder if he's really gone, or if he's hanging around outside. People like him get on my nerves. I better go see and make sure. A dream of falling tends to indicate that the patient has some kind of fear of a basic insecurity, a feeling that he's faced with a problem that he must solve and can't solve. But he's got to solve it, but he can't solve it, but it must be solved. Ah, ah, Mr. Ah, Belford. Ah, I'm, I'm falling. Help me, I'm falling! No, no, you're not. You're here in my office, sitting in a chair. Huh? Yes. But I was falling. I started to go out of my apartment, and I opened the door to the hall, and there wasn't any floor under my feet, just emptiness. And I tried to grab hold of something, and there wasn't anything, nothing at all, anywhere. Just darkness. What happened next? Were you hurt? Doctor, how could I have been hurt? It was just in my mind. Maybe I stumbled or something, but I didn't fall because there was no place to fall. Momentary dizziness from overwork, fatigue. Yes, yes, maybe. And since then, you've had a fear of falling. A phobia. Phobia, Phobia yes. about high places. Okay, Mr. Bedford, let's try another recall. Now, this time, I want you to remember more about the falling and your friend Giller. Ah! Stop it! Don't kill me! Don't throw me over the rail, please! Shut up! Well, you probably think I'm gonna give you one last chance before we toss you off this ramp. It's not my fault. I tried to get funds. Bureau's short on funds. Terrible task ahead. He can't hear you. Bedford, I came to you and begged you to okay our application, but you turned us down. You did all you could to block us. Black market rabble? Police never seemed to get you all. Probably bought off. That's right, bought off. Now look, Bedford, for old time's sake, you want to get in on this along with us. I'll let you in. I have a sentimental feeling toward you. I think you sincerely felt you shouldn't okay our application. I never will. Even if you kill me. Oh, you mean that? I've got my job, responsibility. Heavy industry comes first. Remember when there were eggs, how the shells looked when they were dropped? Remember how it felt to crush the egg shell underfoot? How did that old nursery rhyme go about putting the pieces of the shell back together? By the way, Bedford, we're making sure the next regional director isn't so devoted to heavy industry. We're getting in somebody with, uh, shall we say, an agricultural frame of mind? Okay, let's finish this up and get going. Get him over the rail. It's almost a mile to the ground. How could a thing like this happen to me and be forgotten? Can a person forget being knocked down, kicked, and threatened with death? It wasn't forgotten. It remained buried beneath, repressed. We'll have to try some more recall, Mr. Bedford. So far, I don't have enough to go on. Now, this business of Giller and his men beating and terrorizing you provides what's called the traumatic incident, the moment of fear that starts the chain reaction of repression going. But, uh... Are you willing to try another recall? Not now, Doctor. We shouldn't stop at this point. I, I couldn't stand anymore. Tomorrow, maybe. We'd better go on now, Mr. Bedford. Now, from what you recall, I got an impression that there's no time to waste. I don't think they just beat you up and threatened you. I think they did throw you over the rail to your death. I think they killed you. All right, Doctor. I'll let you start your recall-inducing gadget again, but don't, don't make me go back to that moment. Something else, I couldn't stand to see them standing there above me, 
higher and higher, and then the ramp and the railing disappearing. Now, this time, I'd like you to think of something pleasant, satisfying. Perhaps a day in your work when you were particularly pleased with what you accomplished. The public baths. Kids splashing around, lots of hot water. Wonder how many of us would be dead by now, dead from contamination from the perpetual fallout if we hadn't built those huge pools and fountains over there. It's the hardest decision I ever made. I felt like a lunatic giving them the go-ahead. A lot of people were angry about that. But after I saw the figures from the Anti-Radiation Committee, it had to be done. No matter how many people got angry, I know my duty. It's to the whole people, not a few special groups here and there. Uh, you say you okayed the building of mass public baths, and you actually stood and watched the people bathing. That's, that's right. Togas, like ancient times. Mr. Bedford, I want you to listen to me carefully. I have something important to say to you. What's, wh what's wrong, Doctor? Well, as a licensed general practitioner, I've been interested in the idea of public baths as an anti-radiation measure. In my opinion, it's a sound idea. But the proposal hasn't yet been put through. No baths have been built. Hmm? It'll be at least five years before the baths can be put into operation. The usual interpretation doesn't quite check. Sometimes the dream isn't quite usual. If a man has a dream of the future, it's awfully hard to identify its source because the source hasn't happened yet. Tell me, Bedford, now you were exposed to a great deal of radiation in the early part of your life, and so were your parents. That's right. We all were. We all went through the blasts and the heavy fallout of the war, the contamination of our food, water, homes, clothing. Do you remember any unusual exposure, either to you or to your parents, radiation approaching a dangerous maximum? I, uh, let, me, let me try to remember. I, I'm confused. You think I'm some sort of a freak. Stop sitting there in the chair insulting yourself. You have to make plans. Plans? <laughs> There's nothing I can do. There's no way I can stop him. Try to remember any toxic dose of radiation, especially in the earliest part of your life. Now go back to the enemy missile attack. Sirens. Can you hear sirens? You're possibly running toward a shelter, your family running too, across a field maybe. I'm sorry, doctor, I've had all I can take. I'll see you again some other time. You're leaving? Thanks for the help. I've got to consider all this. Maybe I'm not remembering the future. Maybe it's just a false memory, a neurotic fantasy. How could we check? If it's really in the future... <laughs> What's the matter? I... I can't get up. What? I can't stand up. I'm afraid I'll fall. Doctor, now I can't even get to my feet. Well, make yourself comfortable in your chair and we'll go on with the therapy, as I said we should. I guess I have no choice. Now, you know what we're after this time. At some point in your life, you apparently were exposed to a near-toxic dose of radiation. Wait for me! Hey, don't leave me behind! Come on back! Hey, Tony, wait for me! Hurry up! Okay. Let's get down. Get the metal lid up. And listen. They're almost here. Get the lid of the shelter up so we can get down there and be safe. You scared, Jimmy? Yes, yes. yes. Open that lid! Not until you apologize for what you said in class the other day. You said my family moved here because they thought nobody would bomb this sector. You said my family was scared of being bombed. Okay, let's see. Yes, I remember. When Tony and I were kids during the war. We got the scuffling, seeing who was braver. And while we were scuffling, the first warhead exploded a couple of miles up the coast. So that's where you got the near-toxic dose. Yes. The whole place was saturated. Hot. 
They had to rope off the rubble, close the roads. I was in the hospital for oh, a month, down in the underground medical wards, along with the real casualties. Weren't you a real casualty? No, no, I wasn't hurt. They made all the tests. They found no sign of tissue damage, blood count okay, bone marrow unaffected, no cancerous formations. But now you know you were affected. Yes, I was affected. Now listen to me, Mr. Bedford. You still have time to re-examine your dealings with Gillard. You mean give him the bureau funds he wants so he can set up his black market operations? No, Dr. Sharp. I have my responsibility to the people of this area. Those funds have to be given to the proper applicants. Even if it means your life? Yes, even if it means my life. I'm still not going to give Giller the funds. I respect you, Mr. Bedford. I can see why the government gave you the job. I've tried to do it right. I feel proud of what I've done. A hygienic baths, evidently I'll be successful there. That alone makes it worthwhile. I don't feel too depressed. All in all, it was worth it. A lot of people died in the war. My death comes a number of years later, but, well, I can possibly consider it as a bona fide war death. With honor. Hey, look, I can stand up now. I'm on my feet. Bringing up that material about the radiation exposure must have done it. Do you intend to come back again and see me? No, there doesn't seem to be much of a reason. I'd like to keep on trying. Maybe there's a junction of possible futures. Some point in time at which we can deflect the future that's waiting for you. Uh-huh. I'll think about it. Goodbye, Doctor. And thanks a lot for trying. to see me? My name is, is Tony Giller. I'm sorry to bother you, but this constitutes an emergency. I, I got, well, well it, it's a compulsion, and it's following up my life. Sit down, tell me about it. I, I, I have an irresistible urge to push people. Push people? Towards windows, out. What am I going to do, Doc? There was a little shrimp of a guy I pushed once, and one day a girl I was standing ahead of me on an escalator, and I shoved her. She was injured. I'm afraid I'll eventually kill somebody someday. Some perfectly harmless person who never did anything wrong in his life. <laughs> A stone is never afraid of anything. A stone has no sense of futurity, no sense of a future to control. Uh, wherefore, it has no fear. If you can feel fear, it means that you can sense the future. To the extent that you can sense the future, you can control it. You don't have to be stuck with any particular future. If you take the trouble to dream about the future, then you have a chance to do something about the future. If you don't like atomic wars, you have a chance to do something about it, provided you dream that it's there, nightmare or not. You have a chance to do something.